We are here. Yeah. We are live <laughs> at four, four, horse, four Horsemen Studios for the Money, Money in the, the Bank, Bank show. show. John, we have such a huge show God. leading up to the payback pay-per-view. I can't wait to get started. And can you just tell them what we have in store for them for the yes. next four weeks? People, what I, do we got? I would be honored to. Ladies and gentlemen, strap in to your seats. Put on your seatbelts because we got ourselves an amazing interview to start a four-part series yes. on Edge. Yes. Adam Copeland, the rated R superstar, the ultimate opportunist. We are blessed and honored to have him as our first wrestler interview guest on this show. Yes. He'll come in, he's going to be coming up later on in the program. But Dre, start us off. Let me just tease him real quick. Oh, sure. The question we have to ask ourselves, yeah. and you have to ask yourselves, and you'll find out on this show, is Edge coming back to the WWE? But let's start with Monday Night Raw. Let's do it. Dude, I've never seen anything like this. I, I felt like I was back in the Attitude Era with McMahon and Stephanie and, and, and Triple H. What, what did you think about the bell thing? I thought, I thought that was fantastic. I mean, the way I've never seen anything like it on Raw, where they where the CEO comes out and yes, stops yes. the match, tries to disqualify a wrestler in the middle of the match. The COO, <laughs> which is Triple H, runs down and take, makes them restart the match. Yeah. I felt bad for the announcer. He had to keep going up and down and up and down and getting yelled at. And then Vince... Picking up, just yes. takes the belt. He literally like, goes home. Dude. It was perfect. And did you know, when he picked up the belt, yeah. he, I don't know if he realized this, but he grabbed the belt and he swung it. The, the ring announcer had to duck. Yeah. Because the bell almost clocked him in the freaking head. Dude, it's amazing. Yeah. When Vince gets going, he's like, yeah. I'm in a one way tunnel vision. <laughs> literally, no yeah. chance. No chance in hell. Dude, yeah. when, ugh. Oh. It oh. was just, it was great. Was we need to get back to those days when oh, yeah. Stephanie said, please don't hurt him, Paul. Please don't hurt him. And Vince came back with, you made my baby cry. <laughs> I was like, this is what, this is wrestling. Oh, yeah. This is what I want. This Absolutely. is what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I love that end segment because Stephanie brings them together, you know, tricks them both <laughs> to be in the yeah. same room. Yes. Uh, and then Vince shows you what the original cerebral yes. assassin can yes. do. I mean, Triple H was like, I'm gonna bring him and have it. And Viz is like, no, 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 no. I want it better for you. You deserve better. Yes. You're a champion. Yes. And then Triple H actually had to go, oh, maybe he's right. And it was a great, it was a great turnaround. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was great. And then the, let's do a family hug. Oh my God. What a, oh. John, let's it's end so this exciting. segment on a family hug. Please, yeah. We'll be right back. All right, we are back on the Money in the Bank show. Dallas. And we are moving on to a pretty huge development in the WWE. Wow. Team Hell No has broken up. Oh. What did you think seeing that on SmackDown on Miz TV? I felt like I was back at my Sadie Hawkins dance when Joanna Neville stopped going to the dance with me. You broke up. It I was, can't even, I don't even know what it, to do with that. I, That's I, amazing. I, <laughs> I, we were Sadie Hawkins. Yeah, but sure. Sadie Hawkins is the girl, last guy. Anyway. Right. Um, yeah, I, 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 okay. Yes. I love what they're doing with Daniel Bryan. Yes. I love what they're doing with Randy Orton. Yeah. I love putting Team RK No. Oh, my God. RK No is a brilliant title. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but um, that was on the show. I know. But I <laughs> oh, want to take credit. Fine. Um, but I, uh, I, I would love to see Randy go out on his own. Well, and, and I think Daniel that's what they're doing. Own. I think that's what they're doing. I think the pay per view. That's what's going to happen at the pay per view. I think Daniel Bryan is going to cost them some, and he's going to turn on Randy, and that's it. Randy's going to be. That's it. I'm going to go do it on my own. I think that's what's going to now, happen. Or do you think Randy's going to turn on Daniel? God, oh, oh, that's what I think is gonna think? happen. I think Randy's gonna go heel. Ooh, I actually, what, what I'm hoping for, what I'm praying for, and I don't think it's gonna happen. What I'm praying oh, wow. for, I'd be surprised. Is that like we talked about this like four weeks ago? Yeah. That Randy is that other member of the Shield. That he turns on Bryant, and he's the that fourth member that they've been missing. That, oh God. to me, would take them to oh the my next God. level. That would be awesome. I, I, I'm in with that. I'm in with that. Can I give a shout out? A special shout out. To our boy Kane, yes. who we have been kind of yes. beaten up a little bit yes. over the last few weeks. He killed on both shows. Yes. His interview segments were hilarious. They were. Him yelling at uh, Daniel Bryan, oh, they all, and all this stuff. And then and then when he hugged Vicky, I absolutely <laughs> lost it. It was great. Absolutely I, lost I mean, it. look, I, 
I have an apology set up for you later, Kane. I'll tell you about it later on the show. Fine, um, fine. But uh, yeah, it, it, I like this segment. I like what they're doing. Yeah. I'd love to see them go out, uh, on their own, but yeah. I think maybe, like you're right, maybe they're setting up for that. I feel like But I just want something dramatic. I want something to happen with the Shield. I understand that the Shield needs to have worthy opponents. Right. So it makes sense, but let's ratchet it up a well, little and, bit. And that's what I was thinking the same, I feel the same way, man, because the shield, it seems like they're setting up the shield yeah. to push other storylines. They yeah. just won the belts. I know. People should be coming after them. We I shouldn't know. be focusing on a team breaking up. I they know. just won the belts. It's, it's, it's a little muddy, but I'm hoping yeah. that payback is usually a transitional pay-per-view. Right. So let's see what happens after payback, which I think the next pay-per-view is the money in the bank. Yeah. We what? Might, and we might be there. Speaking of, we'll be right back after this. What you what you want? What you what you want? Best. John! Yes! What do you make of a Jericho oh. Punk Curtis Axel uh, development? That uh, that that whole thing that's happening. I thought that was uh, a great way to end that match. Uh, to have the theme song, the Titan Tron come on, his theme song come on. Jericho get distracted. Now, I didn't like the fact that he got rolled up and beat that quickly. I hated that. <sighs> however, it's putting everybody over. Yeah, I know, but but how? Yeah, right. That's and that's the thing I want to talk about because in that match, Axel showed me some stuff that I'd never seen in the last few weeks. I he agree. had some nice power moves. He put it match together, and I don't know if that's him figuring him out. You know, figuring the ring work out more and more each week, yeah. or if it's Jericho's professionalism that he was able to put him over so well. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, there's some good scouting reports on Curtis Axel. Yeah, and, I know. And I'll tell not... you what, he's going to win the IC Championship. Oh, no. I'm telling you right now, <sighs> Fandango has a concussion. He's out. Oh, does he? Yeah. Does he have a concussion? Yes, he, he legitimately does he really? has not been cleared to wrestle. Because no one cares about him anymore? No, he's been pulled, and actually the WWE is very upset yes. about the steam that he's been building and the fact that he has a concussion. They're upset with Zack Ryder, because oh. Zack Ryder gave him the concussion on the show. Well... With the uh, with the bro the broski boot. Well, this seems to be happening. We got three concussions now. I know. Swagger's gone. All of a sudden, the WWE has a bunch of concussions. Yes. Well, what are we talking about? Well, here's the thing. Well, there's a new person. Hogan's at forty. I know. Well, yeah. that's the thing. They're trying to get away from the old school and be yeah. more relevant. Yeah. So they have actually somebody on staff right. whose sole responsibility is concussion relation. That's amazing. So right, now they're good. now they're they're really you know they're doing suit. yeah they're doing yeah. battery tests. Right. But I think them putting Axel in at the last minute. That just means. I hope so. He's going to win the. Uh, Curtis Axel's going to win the championship. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. Yeah. This CM Punk Jericho match, I'll tell you what. Talk to me. CM Punk is turning face. Roka Sight! I said that! But I, I said it too! No, no, I, said, I it too. said that first! I said it too! Look, hashtag me. No, no, Roka no. Sight! No, I no, said no, 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 CM no. Punk was going face. Well, I, I said that, that. that! I said that! No, no, you no, said that to no. Ziggler. And what happened? No, oh, Ziggler no, came back no, heel. No, no. Okay. But I, I did, did say it about did Ziggler, but I did say it about Jericho. <laughs> not Jericho, about, about CM Punk. I right. think they did right because they laid the promo with Jericho's promo. He said right, he was all this respect. Paul stuff. E is not authorized to make this match exactly. on his behalf. Exactly, and and I thought Jericho's uh, uh, promo when he said like. CM Punk brings out the best in me. I have to beat CM Punk. He, you know, I've never, I never get more tested than when I face CM Punk. That's all respect, and it that's because they're laying the ground. This is what I said yeah. before. Yeah. In Chicago, he's yeah. gonna get cheered. There's, right. he hasn't been. Right, yeah. There's no. He's gonna get the hometown cheers. They're, oh, yeah. they're not gonna turn him heel. If Absolutely. they do, then it's brilliant. If right. they turn him heel, they keep him heel. Right. But I think he's staying. I think he's going face. Yeah, we both do. And now we'll be right back uh, with our next segment. And our next segment is actually brought to you by USANA Health Sciences. This is how we do it. That's USANA.com. Professor, take it away. Hi again, my little students. I'm the TA. And this is This Week in Professional Wrestling History. Teach us, Professor. I'm the Professor, and let's get right to it. In 1983, Harley Race beat Ric Flair to become the NWA Heavyweight Champion. And in that, became the first person to have ever held that title seven times. In 2006, at the second ECW One Night Stand pay-per-view, RVD beat John Cena for the WWE Championship. And for the professor's pick, in 1993, at the first ever King of the Ring tournament was held by the WWF. 
And although this was the first King of the Ring pay-per-view event, it was actually the seventh King of the Ring tournament. This pay-per-view saw the finals come down to Bret Hart beating Bam Bam Bigelow to win the tournament. Of course, Bret Hart had beaten IRS two years earlier to also win King of the Ring tournament, thus becoming the first wrestler to ever be two-time King of the Ring winner. Ooh, I don't think I got that. I may need to stay after school. Class dismissed. All right, thank you, Professor. I'm sure we're both a lot more knowledgeable after that segment. Uh, what's what's going on over here? What uh, are you doing? I, I, was, I fell asleep during what? the uh, the Ziggler oh, Big E. Uh, well, that's that's our next Rio. segment. We're gonna talk about Sorry, Ziggler Big E. Del Rio. Oh, well, why'd you fall asleep? Tell us, Dre. The best thing about this angle is yeah. the secret admirer. Oh wow! You oh oh you connect, you're gonna connect all the way through. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Okay. Because Ziggler, they he hasn't been on the show for weeks. Yeah. And, and then you bring him out like that. That's oh, his return. So agreed. So That's agreed. That's his return. Yes. We haven't seen the huh. world champion in almost a month, and his return is walking down the stage and getting right. tossed into the apron in the middle of a Jericho match. Like it doesn't make. Any sense, and then he comes back at the end of a Del Rio 3MB match. Who, if you're like me, you were like, mm. 3M, and, and then he shows up, and you're like, oh, yeah, okay, wow, you bring him here. Yeah, I agree with you. Completely. And unfortunately, the best thing about Del Rio is his ring announcer right now. Yeah, Ricardo. Ricardo. Yeah. Uh, is the best thing about Del Rio. Yeah, yeah. All, this whole thing is falling apart, and the most entertaining thing for me yeah. <laughs> was Big E dropping Caitlyn, being the, uh, oh my God. being the, uh, uh, the secret yep. admirer, and then AJ said, "You took everything from me. You took everything from me." It reminded it me of like the. Uh, who, uh, this is very. I'm, I'm sorry about to say this, but yeah. who's the girl that got hit with the Tanya Harding? Why? Oh yeah, Nancy Why? Kerrigan. Yeah, yeah. That's what it reminded oh, me of. She's that. like, "You do it," and she's crying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, I was definitely bored with the Ziggler return, and I love Ziggles. Yeah. Well, two things I want to say, and I never thought I would say this. The reason the Del Rio thing is dying is because Swagger is not around. Swagger was a great foil for Del Rio. Those promos between the both of them and yeah. Coulter were fantastic. Well, they had Coulter they, on the show. Right, they had, but it doesn't without, without enough Swagger. without Swagger. And I never thought, amid, I would say that, for a guy like him, I just never thought it would matter, and it so matters. Yeah. And when we go, and and to and the next point I want, next point I want to make is about Caitlyn. Yeah, that's a Einstein thing going on there. Uh, I have a, a, an incredible love for Caitlyn. Her going nuts, <laughs> giving her something to do. Thank you, WWE. Thank you. She is fantastic. Going the crazy angle now. You don't know what's going to happen. And last night at the SmackDown taping, she slapped a referee. And got fined five thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars, I think it was. So they're building this angle. So for that Caitlyn AJ match at the pay per view, now there's some heat behind the match. I have no idea who's going to win if they're both going to be crazy. What's funny is I've never really cared about a Divas match as much as I've cared about this one coming yeah. up. Yeah, this is and John, fantastic. you actually made a plea for the, I the Divas division to pick it up, and it's happening. I hope they're listening. Maybe they listen. I hope they're listening too. Yeah. Um, my plea was for the tag team division to start up. Here's the belt. Your plea was for the DBS division. You're getting your wish. Yeah. Someone grant our wish together. Please. I'll be back. Ladies and gentlemen, please fasten your seatbelts. The following segment is rated R. Part one of Edge. For those of the benefit of flash photography, roll the tape on edge. My head is spinning yes. because I'm super duper excited. .net, that's not a real site, it's just in my head. <laughs> um, one of my childhood wrestling idols, I know John as well. Huge fan. Is Huge on fan. our show. Yes. Adam Copeland, Edge is here. Edge, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. We'll so, just jump into it. Yeah, right? let's, let's just, just jump into it. It's good with you. Yeah, by the way. So, you've won over 30, uh, 30 titles. Is it 31 titles total? I, yeah, I, I think it is 31. Wow. <laughs> I guess after 20. I was counting. <laughs> <laughs> so, which one was the most memorable win for you? I, you know, it, it's, it's really hard. But it, it's kind of like, I, I don't know if you ever named your favorite kid. You know what I mean? Because it's, uh, they were all kind of special. The, the first one. So, like, the first time I won the Intercontinental Championship, it was in Toronto. So, I was home. Right. You know, it was in the Sky Dome. There yeah. were, like, 30,000 people, and no idea it was going to happen. 
happen. And in a, you know, entertainment-based industry, when something like that can happen, it, it really blows your mind. So that one was huge. Uh, winning the tag team titles the first time with Christian because, I mean, that's what we said we were going to do our entire lives. Right, and to yeah. do it at WrestleMania, right. sitting on a table, <laughs> propped up on two ladders, that's a pretty surreal moment. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, winning the, the tag team titles with Hulk Hogan. I mean, oh, yeah. Good yeah. Day, you know, um, and, and winning the first WWE Championship. And right. uh, pretty much any time that I uh, got in there with Undertaker for the championship, well, uh, you can't just, yeah, I can't put one above the others. Gotcha. Well, um, speaking of Hulk Hogan, Andre and I are huge, huge Hulkamaniacs. And, <laughs> you know, watching your hey, life story. Well, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, brother. Watching uh, the li- your life story and uh, the documentaries that have been done on you, we, we know that that's a huge huge uh, figure in your life uh, as it was for us because he got us into wrestling and I think both of us really identify you be- with you because of the fact that your story mirrors what a lot of us wish we could have done <laughs> when we were uh, your age you know pursue wrestling because of the influence from Hogan is there anything about like is there a promo of his that you remember um, or you know like something that struck you that, that just really got you into being on the mic and learning how to be on the mic how important that was with wrestling yeah, you know, he was the first guy, um, I mean, he hooked me on it, and, and I remember seeing it before him, uh, or b- before I kind of caught, you know, wind of him, but it was, he was the guy that, uh, whether it was an electric promo where his eyes were just bugged out, and, yeah. and like, he was fully in Hulkamania mode, right. or whether he was, you know, had that look on his face where you just felt sorry for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like he, he he was a master at when when he would get that look on his face and reach to the crowd. I was like, oh no, I feel sorry for that six foot eight, three hundred pound man. <laughs> and that's really saying something. That yeah. that you know the fact that he could get you to to buy that he was you know. Uh, in trouble, yeah. uh, and he, he, I don't know, he always had a sincerity in his eyes that yeah. I think as a kid, I, I, I was like, okay, I, I get that, yeah. I get that, he's not just the superhero, he's also, you know, he, he can be in trouble, and I think that is a key to any massive baby face, is mm-hmm. you, you have to, you know, show that you can get beat up too, right. otherwise it doesn't mean much if you just, you know, beat everybody up all the time. Right. Yeah, yeah, I noticed in your, uh, one of your documentaries, it's one of the things that I think makes people like you, uh, like Flair, like people that can actually sell the other person. You are so great at making people look like when you wrestled Batista, you made him look like he was invincible, like the monster that he was. Yeah. The to you, is that as important as uh, actually executing the moves as how you sell your uh, in-ring partner's moves to you? Uh, yeah, I think that's probably what I did best, <laughs> which is probably why I'm retired. Um, but uh, I, 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 you know, after Hogan and then, you know, kind of deciphering why it was that I was so uh, enamored with, you know, the Mr. Perfects and the Shawn Michaels and the Bret okay. Hart and the Owen Hart. I was like, okay, what is it about that? Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at the way they take stuff. They make everybody look like a million bucks. Right. And in wow. turn they end up looking like a million bucks, too. Yeah. And so I, I think, you know, Jay and I both, uh, Christian and I both, I'm just going to call him Jay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird call him Christian. Yeah. Um, so Jay and I both, I think that's kind of what we we prided ourselves on. Um, you know, as a tag team, we're like, okay, we can get in there with the APA. We can get in there with Golga and Kurgan. We can get in there with... Uh, you know, the DOA, but then we can get in there with the Hardys and the Dudleys right, and right. Too Cool and do a comedy match. Oh, yeah, to too cool. Oh, right. Too yeah. cool, yes. <laughs> uh, speaking so, of... Yeah, it, yeah. it does... It, it's a huge element to it. I think it was probably the biggest element of my career. Um, you know, thankfully I had a lot of guys over the years that made me look great too, whether it was Jeff Hardy hanging 20 feet above the ring oh, and uh, yeah. giving me his body or... The flip side of that, lying on a ladder and watching him 20 feet in the air about to, you know, jump on my chest. Right, and, uh, right. You know, that's kind of just the, the, the way it works, or should work anyway. Um, spe- uh, well, that's, and speaking of uh, Jay or Christian, as uh, many might know him as, um, how old, uh, two questions for you. How old were you when you guys met? And 
Do you have a favorite made-up name for the tag teams that you guys <laughs> created in your backyard uh, growing up in Canada? Oh, wow, we had some ridiculous names. Yeah, but I, mean, we, we I love those names. Sixth grade. <laughs> oh, sixth grade, okay. Yep, so we, we met in the sixth grade, and, you know, from day one, um, you know, he moved to town, and he was like, he was the new kid, he had a ninja star, he had, you know, these <laughs> white high tops, and he wore like wrist sweatbands and a football jersey. So I was like, how the hell is this dude? Like, what a tool. But, then, you know, as we started talking, I was like, well, he's got a ninja star, so I guess I'll look into that. Cause, you know, I'd always see those in Karate Illustrated, and I wanted one. Right. And then, uh, then we started talking wrestling. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's pretty much from that point forward, we've been attached to the hip. And then when we started creating tag teams, um, we would kind of ha it ended up being like Edge and Christian because we would have kind of singles names. He was Sweet Daddy Freakout. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then mine would change. You know, I was like the blonde bomber splint for a long time. That, that was a big one. That was my sting phase. Right. And then I was Corey Concrete. Oh, oh, there we go. I kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, and then Sex and Hardcastle was born, and oh that was pretty God, much, uh, yeah, that was, I thought, okay, well, I can't get a name more ridiculous than that, so I think I should probably, you know, stick with this one. Yeah, and, and I saw that y you were most likely to win the WWE Championship in, in high school. Um, yeah, yeah, they, they actually had to uh, white out the little F part. Right, but yes, right. Uh, Yeah, I was, uh, they do the most likely stuff, and everybody knew, you know, I was the wrestling guy that never grew out of it and was saying that he was going to do it, even though, you know, in high school it wasn't exactly the most cool thing to be. Um, yeah. I didn't care because I just loved it. So, uh, you know, when I was 17, I was, you know, going down on the weekends to Toronto and beginning my training while I was still in high school. So it was pretty, I, I didn't shout it from the rooftops like, hey, I'm a wrestler and I wrestle <laughs> on the weekends in small towns in front of six people. Right. But, um, it was, it was pretty much well known that uh, I was at least going to give it a shot. Wow. All right. Well, Ed, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with a little more from the rated R, the former rated R superstar, uh, Adam Copeland, Edge. I just did a little state of euphoria. Yeah. Uh, Edge is one of my heroes. So that Mine was part too. one. Tune in next week for part two Yeah. for a more in-depth look and Adam Copeland, Edge. So let's get on to the next segment. Yeah. Um, I would probably rather punch myself in the nuts. <laughs> um, but we're going to talk about Cena and, and, and Ryback. Feed me more. Feed me something entertaining. Right. Yeah. How about Literally that? feed me more. Yeah, what, yeah. Do you, what do you think about this, John? Uh, I'm kind of losing interest in this. And, so lost which, interest. Which breaks my heart because it's a three stages of hell match. Well, like and I said, so... they picked the wrong stages, first of all. Uh, yeah, right, yeah. A lumberjack right. match? Yeah. And the thing is, Ryback is actually doing a really good job he in these is. matches. His match with Kane yeah. was the highlight of SmackDown yeah. for me. And so his promo stuff is getting along yeah. really well. Yeah. Can, I, can I take a moment and tell you how much I hate John Cena's <laughs> promos? Oh, me too. Like, he was there. He's like, he'll start yelling over, like Ryback's trying to come back. And he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. He tries to yell over him. And I then know. he tells him to shut up. I know. Come on. Cena is such a two-year-old. It drives me out of my mind with these promos. And of yeah. course, he has to throw in all these gay illusions. Because yeah. somehow that equates not having manhood. Which is so stupid for a guy who's out there visiting children's hospitals and vis doing that be it, don't be a bully campaign. Yeah. Yeah. It, just, it just makes no sense what he does in that when he does his promos. When you said that John is, yeah. John is a two-year-old, I'm going to say, I'm going to go over on the four, four-year-old. Um, <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I, I really, I, look, this is um, their main event yeah. and I feel like what, they can't put this as the last match because that no, punk Jericho match punk Jericho. is going to steal the show. Right, Putting absolutely. this as the last match is going to be ending the pay-per-view on a low note. A very low like, note. I'm, try, I, I'm manufacturing energy to yeah. even talk about this yeah. segment right you know, now. I don't, I don't think we should keep going. I think yeah. we're done. You we're know what? Yeah. Protest. Yeah. What you, what you want? What you, what you want? All right. Welcome back to the Money in the Bank show. And uh, we are moving on to talk about TNA for the second week in a row. For the second damn week in a damn row, TM damn night. Let's <laughs> pack the money in the damn near bank show. Right on. Um, what did you think? 
of the show. Here, I'm a little bit disappointed, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Coming off that pay-per-view, which I thought was excellent. Yes, you said it was great. Uh, I, I thought their follow-up show was not as strong as oh. the pay-per-view. Okay. And normally the show right after their big pay-per-view yeah. is like, the crowd is crazy. Yeah. The, the, the focus of the show is Brooke Hogan. And oh. and um and, and Bully Ray. Ugh. I think that they're missing an opportunity with Sting. Right. I think that Sting is like a walking Undertaker, the equivalent, not the equivalent, but he there actually there's rumors that he is considering if they're not gonna give him a direct storyline. Yeah. I've been reading that he's considering finally going to the WWE. Oh my god, that yeah. would be awesome. To wrestle a promo program with the Undertaker. That would be fantastic. And the two icons. Why not? It, it, it's in the work. Right. I don't know if it's in the works, Let's but there's out. rumors. I agree with you about the Brooke Hogan thing. That storyline needs to die. The audience has no reaction to it, like zero reaction to it, and nobody believes that that brute she would be with that brute there's and no the whole. Way. It's just there's no traction on that at all. And somewhere during the pay, somewhere during the program, the crowd started chanting on their own. Uh, Cena sucks. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And Goldberg chants the whole time. And I was like, what? what? In the middle of a TNA paper, uh, uh, I mean, program? I was shocked by that. And that tells you the audience needs more. You know? Yeah. It needs yeah. more of what they're doing. And to go back to your point, and, yeah. and this is, I mean, I don't really have much more to say about TNA, yeah. but if Bully Ray really did come home yeah. with Brooke Hogan, yeah. Hulk would say, Brooke, what you doing, brother, <laughs> without Bully Ray? What you gonna do with this bully, Ray? <laughs> it's not happening, man. Right. Come on, look I at Brooke. Well, let's, let's talk about something else that's a little bit bigger that happened. Yeah. Which is Quentin Rampage Jackson yeah. was introduced as a new member of the roster yeah. on TNA. What did you think of that, Dre? Uh, I think that uh, MMA stars often have trouble translating to professional wrestling. Agreed. And I think that he was boring on the mic. Oh, God, he was I'm terrible I'm curious on the to mic. see how he wrestles, but uh, hey. I, I'm gonna give him a shot, but yeah. I'm not impressed so far. Yeah, let's we are just not say impressed. That. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Angle had you, to come out and save him in the middle of his interview segment because because Rampage was through that whole segment. It was nothing. There was no reaction. The crowd was dead. They were going to get nachos. They needed Hang, Angle came out and did what he needed to do. Rampage. Yeah, you killed it. Came out and killed this segment. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> I'm Dre. And I'm John. And this is the Move of the Week. We have with us the lovely Jezebel from Paradise City. And of course, our boy every week, Matt Practice, is here to help us with the moves. Oh, oh, oh. Nice. All right. All right. Well, <laughs> she's ready to show us how to do the Boston Crab. People like Rick Martell have made this famous, and now Chris Jericho yeah, has made it famous. Yeah, he does it with the walls of Jericho, his variation on Pulling it. Yeah. Back. So what she's going to do, she's going to get the feet underhooked beneath the arms right. and right. torque back oh. as oh. much as she possibly can, ah. wrenching ah. the lower kidneys ah. useless. As soon as she feels back as much as she can, I think ah. that uh, there could be some tapping out happening. Yes. If Matt is uh, holding on. Nope, he's oh, done. There it is. And uh, that was it. That was fast, man. That is painful. Yeah. Very painful. Speaking of painful. Oh, can I? Is she? Oh, there it is. See, I should have worn glasses, man. Um, I think I'm in love. Well, I'm John. And I'm lonely. <laughs> this has been your move of the week. We are back for one of my favorite segments. John likes it too. Oh, of course. The Glass Ceiling Wrestler, wrestler of, of the, the week. week. Johnny. Yes. Who's your Glass Ceiling Wrestler of the Week? Uh, we are going to continue the love for TNA on my Glass Ceiling Wrestler of the Week. Because I am giving some mad love to the outlaw, Mickey James. What? She is fantastic. She is killing it right now on TNA as a heel. I love the turn she's doing. She is like getting involved and then not involved and not helping the faces and then going back and apologizing and giving these like semi-legitimate excuses. But you can tell from her faces and her things that she is totally turning heel. I love the fact that she's clapping for the people who are competing against her when they do decent moves and then she's doing dirty tricks. It is genius. I love it. Keep doing it. Um, I'm with you. Go knock them dead, Mickey James. Three, over to you. My glass ceiling wrestler of the week is Mark Henry. What? 
The, ah! He's coming back, no! folks. And listen, I read a tweet that he sent out. He said, I am not retiring. There's too much hate in my heart to not wrestle. That's what he said. I thought it was brilliant. When he comes back, WWE, please, this is the best heel you have on the roster. Yes. Give him a push or make him sexual chocolate. One of the two. One of the two. Bring him that sexual chocolate or make him that crazy heel in the Hall of Pain because that's what he does. And that is the Glass Ceiling Wrestler of the Week. All right, welcome back to the Money in the Bank show. We are doing a new uh, segment this time. It's called the Mini Segment. Mini. Here we go, here we go. We're doing pay-per-view predictions for payback. Okay. I'm going to read them off. Dre and I are going to respond to them. All right. All right. First up, Sheamus versus Damian Sandow, our producer special. Oh, in the pre-show? That, the, the yeah, mid pre-show, yeah. Mid-Carters pre-show? I'm yeah. going to call Sheamus. Sheamus, really? I'm going to go Sandow in an upset. Woo! Yes, you heard it first. Broke aside. All right, um... Next up, Dean Ambrose versus Kane. Dean Ambrose, no yeah. question. Yeah, I agree. Ambrose as well. All right, the IC Championship. Barrett versus Miz versus Curtis Axel. What Mr. Is Boring is going to win in an upset, become the new Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion, Curtis Axel. No, no, I disagree. I say Barrett's going to win, he's going to retain it, and they're going to start to push on him. God, I hope so. At least this is what I hope so. Gordon Crap. Gordon. All right, next, um... Caitlyn versus AJ. Ooh, a crazy special. AJ Lee! Caitlyn! Oh! She's gonna snap her in half like the twig that she is. All right, we're moving on. Tag Team Championship. Reigns and Rollins mm. versus Team RK No. Copyright Andre <gasps> Gordon. Orton and Brian. What do you think? I think that uh, The Shield is gonna win the match. I agree. I think The Shield w- wins. and then But there's gonna be controversy. Absolutely. Brian's okay. gonna lose it, blah, blah, blah. And all that's gonna happen. Yes. Dolph Ziggler versus Del Rio which I hope steals the pay-per-view. What do you think? Ziggles. Really? Ziggles. Ziggles. They're not going to bring it back to have him lose. No way. I say Del Rio because they're going to give him a hiatus with a concussion. I think they're going to have him lose to Del Rio. What? Del, Del, Del Rio, and he'll go away for a That's while. That's Latin bias going in. Cool. <laughs> See. All right. Um, Jericho versus Punk. Oh, first of all, I'm not even sure the match is going to happen. I don't know if CM Punk is going to show up. We haven't seen if him. If he does. We haven't seen yeah, him. He, we haven't seen him. We don't even know if he's going to be there. Yeah. He may not even show up. If he does, of course he's going to win. Punk is going to win in his hometown. Ooh. But we may not see CM Punk at the pay-per-view. I'm calling him right now. Be wow. aware. I say Jericho wins. Oh. And I say because <laughs> Punk refuses to take the easy way out that Paul E. provides it. Paul Heyman provides it. I think... Jericho wins. Oh, Punk walks out, and Jericho wins by default. Ah, that's my prediction. Nice, nice call. Oh. All right, last one. Cena versus Ryback in a three stages of hell match. I predict an earthquake, and both men fall into the center of the earth, and they never wrestle. That would be my. That'd be my choice. That's your choice. What do you think's really gonna Cena's happen? Cena's gonna win. Yeah. Freaking, freaking Cena's gonna win, and it's not Cena's fault. But they just push us down our throat. Yeah. I, I wrote in my notes, Cy Cena, but maybe. Just maybe, Ryback wins. And they might try it out to see how it plays since his in-ring work has really picked up. If Ryback wins, I will kiss WWE on the mouth. I will kiss Andre on the mouth. Be right back. We are back for the final segment of the show. Thank you so much for watching so far. But this is the Roka Rant and the Direct to You, where we talk directly to a particular WWE or TNA or ROH superstar. Johnny, who are you ranting about? Uh, I am ranting about one person. Oh. Vince Kennedy oh. McMahon. Middle name. Vincent, I want you to listen to me. I've been a loyal fan of yours since the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, on to now. Please, do me a huge favor. Fix the John Cena issue. You've given him the strap, but his mic skills and everything he's doing in the ring is killing us. Give us a superstar that is going to hang with him on the mic and destroy him on the mic. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get him over so that the audience cheers for him. I get it. But don't you remember what happened with these two lead-ups to The Rock? The Rock hung with Cena, destroyed Cena. It built up uh, empathy and sympathy for him in the audience and it worked when you have him 
bulldozing everybody, whoever comes up and talks to him on the mic, or making fun of him, or make it seem like it's stupid what they're saying, then the audience immediately turns on Cena because they hate that. Please, fix it. Uh, over to you, Dre. My Directed by Dre, which is from my Twitter, at Directed by Dre, I am talking directly to Kane. Ooh, Kane. Got to apologize to you. I've now apologize two weeks in a row. Hashtag I'm sorry. Um, it's incredible to see what you're doing, Kane. I, I did some research, okay? You have competed in the most WWE Monday Night Raws in history at 382 Raws. The wow. third most SmackDowns in history at 285, which is impressive, and 153 pay-per-views. So by the end of the year, you have competed in the most pay-per-views of all time. That's a knowledge bomb. Okay, now here's the thing. Your counterparts in your age bracket are Triple H and The Undertaker, okay? Triple H is 43, The Undertaker is 48, and they together are wrestling a fraction of what you are doing. Wow. You are wrestling more than them consistently, in and out. And see, Vince likes large in life characters, you being in your mid 40s, doing at the level that you're doing, jumping off the top rope, directly to you, Kane. I knocked on you last week, I didn't realize your age. I'm so impressed. I have to say, I am sorry. D directly to you, Kane. Big up on your work. I love it, I respect you. If I'm 45 and doing what you're doing, Give, no, me a, give me a cupcake or something. Yeah, some of us are closer than, than you. But yes, yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that is my direct to you. Kane, much love. So that's our show, guys. Yeah. Tune in next week yeah. for part two Woo. of the Edge interview. And for more of our take on what's going on in the world of professional wrestling. Dre, it's been an awesome show. Yeah, next week, we're going to be following up on Payback. Ooh, yes, yes. Payback. That is a female bomb. Yeah, we can. Let's go.